I want you to read this. Yeah, I want somebody else to read this statement. This is Clarina Nichols, Protects the Fugitive Slave in 18. You're getting quite a workout here. <laughs> okay, any volunteer to read this statement? This is a story of Clarina Nichols protecting a fugitive slave named Caroline in 1861. My cistern, every brick of it, rebuilt from the chimney of my late home, played its part in the drama of freedom. One beautiful evening, late in October 1861, as twilight was fading from the bluff, a hurried message came to me from our neighbor, Fielding Johnson. You must hide, Caroline. Fourteen slave hunters are camped on the park, her master among them. Into the cistern, Caroline was lowered with comforters, pillow, and chair, a wash tub over the trap with the usual appliances of a washroom standing around, completing the hiding. Yeah. In other words, ordinary people, and not so ordinary people, prominent people, were engaged in the process of freeing slaves or protecting blacks from the institution of slavery. I come back to this image again, John Brown and, and all that he represents. And it's not just John Brown. John Brown and, and others are going to, to come to Kansas. James H. Lane, James Montgomery, they are going to become the famous or the infamous Jayhawkers. Kansas, and I want to make this point. I, I think it's crucial for us to, to understand this. Kansas, as far as I know, is the only state in the country, the only territory in the country at the time, where white men risked their lives to go into a slave territory and free black people. 